In this video, I'm going to show you five ways to push the pedals you already have instead of buying new gear. Regardless of what pedals you have in your collection, I'm going to show you five tricks and five new ways to think about them that's going to let you squeeze new uses out of them before you have to buy anything new. My first piece of advice is to pick a pedal and then try to defeat the purpose of whatever that pedal is. So whatever it's supposed to do, try to make it do the opposite of that. And the reason I want you to try that is that you're going to discover some sounds in the process that you would have never discovered otherwise. And finding uses for those sounds is a really cool creative exercise. I'll give you an example. Uh, the Boss DS1 is a distortion pedal. The purpose of this pedal is to boost your signal and make it sound better. So what would happen if we put the distortion knob on zero and we put the level knob on zero? Actually, we have to put it a little above zero because on zero, the pedal is silent. But what if we set the pedal like this and tried to make the, our sound as bad and not boosted as possible? This is what that sounds like. Now, you might be thinking that it did sound bad. It sounded really dinky, and it did. But it didn't just sound bad and dinky. It also sounded very specific. It actually sounded like the entire tone could fit in this really narrow slice of tiny frequencies. That's part of its dinkiness. There's, there's no bass at all. But sounds that are that specific are actually very useful for double tracking. So what I'm about to do is you're going to hear me play not using that sound. I'm going to be using like a normal good sound. And then I'm going to double track with the sound you just heard, the abnormal, bad, dinky sound. And the blend of those two sounds together actually sounds titanic and awesome. <laughs> In the thing you just heard, my normal good sound was the Strymon Iridium. This is like an amp in a pedal or an amp modeler. Uh, and having one of these is very useful for recording. But if you don't have one, there's something I want you to try before you buy one, which is to take your favorite overdrive or distortion or fuzz and just record direct from that. I mean, just stick a cable in the output of the pedal and then run that cable directly into your recording console. You might be surprised how many usable sounds you can get that way. You might have to set the pedal in a way you would never set it if you were running it into an actual amp. Like you might have to turn the tone knob further down or roll the treble off further than you ever have before, stuff like that. But the point is you can get cool sounds just recording direct out of a distortion pedal. Here's a demo I made for one of my songs where I'm recording direct out of an MXR 5150 distortion that was going into a Boss PS6 Harmonist, and then that was going directly into my recording interface.
next trick is if you have any pedals that can work with an expression pedal, set the expression pedal to control pitch. The pro tip here is just that pitch is the coolest thing to control with an expression pedal. So the obvious way to do this would be is if you have a pitch shifter that lets you control the pitch shift with an expression pedal, do that. Now, I think that sounds cool, but if you don't have a pitch shifter, it actually gets better. Uh, there are still ways to control pitch on not pitch shifter pedals. For instance, if you have a delay, changing the delay time with an expression pedal will change the pitch. If you have a reverb that gives you controls for pre-delay or just the uh, reverb time or maybe even the size of the reverb room, uh, changing that with an expression pedal will mess with the pitch. Even a bit crusher that would let you change the sampling rate with an expression pedal it is, would sort of sound like a pitch shift a little bit. Um, all of those things are going to sound different, but running pitch onto an expression pedal is always cool. And it's in the many varieties there are to do that. It's just always a home run. Uh, in this next example, I'm using the Strymon Timeline and I'm using the reverse delay sound and I'm just changing the delay time of the reverse delay time with an expression pedal while I'm playing. that have a mix control, I want you to put the mix on 100%. And if it has like a wet control and a dry control, then I want you to put wet on 100% and dry on 0%, regardless of what the pedal is. I, that's how I want you to set it. And the reason I like to do this is that it's a way of zooming in on the weirdness of that pedal. It's like you're hearing what the pedal thinks your guitar tone is supposed to be instead of what your, your guitar tone sounds like to you. Uh, and if the pedal is a delay or a reverb or something, putting mix on 100% can actually be tricky to play with because you'll be introducing latency. So you might need to uh, work around the rest of the pedal's knobs to get something that's even usable or playable. But that's exactly the kind of thing I, I want you to try. Um, in this next example, I'm using the Chase Bliss Therme, which is a really unusual delay pedal. And I put the mix on 100% and got something that is really freaky and then uh, forced myself to play to it. pro tip is if you have one stereo pedal that makes all your pedals stereo all you have to do is put it last in your chain even if you don't want to use it find some setting on it that is barely doing anything and then turn it on and put that last and it'll add stereo dimension to everything else that comes before it so for example, any Strymon reverb or delay is perfect for this. Any one of them has stereo outputs. Even if you think you don't want reverb or delay right now, that doesn't matter. Just set it so that there's a tiny bit of whatever the effect is, and then use its stereo outputs and let that create this washy, awesome stereo version of your normal sound. 
but for the example in this video, I'm doing something even more low tech than that. I'm just using the Boss CE3 chorus. I I put different knobs on it just to be cute, but don't don't worry about that. The point is that this is just a Boss stereo chorus, um, and I set the rate to be zero, and I set the depth to be like that, 40%, let's say. So you're not really hearing chorusing, but um, into this chorus, I'm running a mono delay. I'm using the Keeley dark side. Where is it? Where, where did I put the Keeley? God damn it. Into that chorus, I'm using the Keeley dark side delay. This is a mono delay, um, but if you run it into the stereo chorus and then you dumb down the chorus and just take the stereo outputs, it sounds like this is a really fancy dimensional stereo delay. Here's a comparison. This is the Keeley delay as a normal mono effect. This is the Keeley delay going into the stereo chorus. Mm -hmm. 